All right, we're going to talk about Rajon Rondo leaving the Lakers. Also, Fred Van Fleet end up staying with the Raptors. But first, let's talk about Michael Jordan and his infatuation with white players. After Gordon Hayward opted out of a 30, what, 30, $34 million extra year, a player option year with uh, Boston, he chose to go to the Charlotte Hornets for $120 million over, what, four or five years. Let's talk about it. Check out the NBA Talk playlist. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All our social media links in the description. And, um, yeah, man, don't forget to follow me on Sportscast, too, for all my live streams. Can't go live on this channel. So, Sportscast, you create a profile, it's free. Follow me. Link's right in the description. Or you can watch me on Goodfellas Sports TV 2.0. And, um, sheesh. Hmm. I mean, I ain't see this one coming. So, now Charlotte has got a crowded backcourt. They crowded at the 3-2. I mean, Miles, uh, Miles Bridges. PJ, uh, I think it was PJ Washington. They got from Kentucky last year. Um... Sheesh, then they got rid of Michael Car Michael Kidd Gilchrist, but they still got Terry Rozier, Devontae Graham, LaMelo Ball in the backcourt. So, I mean, they still got Bismack Biyombo. I mean, I think I did the right thing in the draft. They thought they took the best player available. I think LaMelo could have been the best player in the draft. But really, now you're looking at it, you know, how you fit with Terry Rozier and Devontae Graham, who should have been the most improved player last year. Also, you throw Gordon Hayward in there. So, Hayward, didn't, for that amount of money, they couldn't play the bench. You still got Malik Monk, you got Washington, you got uh, Miles Bridges. So, um, I mean, they just, you know, it's up to the coach. Mitch Kupchak is doing an excellent job over there as far as getting con uh, getting players. But now they got to make it work where they got to trade somebody. They didn't want to play Kim Walker. My whole thing is Gordon Hayward ain't showed nothing since the injury to show he uh, a $220 million player. They just paying people anything. You ain't got to make an all star to get a max contract or close to a max contract or super max contract. Darren Fox ain't made an all star team. Buddy Hill ain't made an all star team. I mean, we could just keep going on and on about the guys that's getting big money. Jalen Brown, great player to make an all star team. Jason Tatum, he deserves his max contract. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna trip. But a lot of these players getting a whole bunch of money and ain't proving it. The market is way inflated, inf inflated. I mean, Gordon Hayward ain't showed us nothing since the injury. So. In my mind, how does he come in and get that money? I'm not going to say it's white privilege. No. I know Michael Jordan loves white players because you see everybody around the league getting a whole bunch of money that didn't deserve it. John Wharton deserved that contract. Russell Westbrook didn't deserve that contract. And neither did Chris Paul deserve that contract he originally signed in Houston. This is what the NFL should be. The NFL is breaking all types of TV records you know, over the last 10 years. They're killing the game. They players, and what they do, deserve to get overpaid. But the NBA, this is what happens when you get 82 game season and all that type of stuff. My whole thing is, they don't, they, these people didn't, just, these guys, a lot of these guys didn't deserve it, but I ain't knocking them. Because these white owners getting way more money, but Gordon Hayward, like, what if he come there and he's not the same player? He go Chandler, Chandler uh, Parks, Parsons. You know what I'm saying? Just getting a check on the bench. I just don't think Gordon Hayward deserved that money. You know, I don't think he did nothing in Boston to deserve that money. And that's crazy. So he's talking about four years. So he getting 30 million. That's I was like, dude, he didn't deserve that shit. But then they didn't want to pay Kimball Walker, and that was way more money. But you pay Gordon Hayward. I mean, Charlotte got a ton of talent. You know, we just gotta see if they could put the use. Some of Rosario Graham, LaMelo, Washington, I think PJ Washington. Sorry if I mentioned butchered his name, Miles Garrett. Um, but I didn't see why bring him in. What the fuck you brought bring Miles Bridges in for? PJ, why don't you bring these guys in? He was, I think, watching him play the four. What you bring these guys in for if you're going to bring Gordon Hayward? That's just misused money. But you can be a bum. You can have one good year just like Deion Waiters and got a hell of a money. Hassan Whiteside, what do you have? One good year in Miami and got all that money. I just don't get it, man. But, you know, they lined up probably going to let Razier Graham, uh, Gordon Hayward, sheesh. Maybe P.J. Washington. They bring Bridges off the bench. And I don't know who played the middle for them, Biombo, but to me, that's a fucking joke. <laughs> Gordon Hayward getting that money. And I can say a lot of guys who got the money. Whiteside was a joke. Um, all these dudes getting these contracts. Buddy Hill ain't did shit in the league. That was a joke. You know, that's these dudes overpaying these guys to keep them. Michael Jordan, Mitch Kupchak, I don't know what they see. Four years. I can see signing for two years or three years. But when nobody out there about to get Gordon Hayward that money, who would you leverage in Gordon Hayward against? Who, who's going to get your Indiana? If you want to go back home to Indiana, a lot of this white ass go back home to Indiana. But Jordan just love white players. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? But uh, more probably more Mitch Kupchak than him because the old Lakers GM is the GM over there. 
But um, we can move on. Rajon Rondo penned a letter that he was leaving the Lakers. And Avery Bradley left to join the Miami Heat. Jameson Crowder left the Miami Heat to join the Phoenix Suns, I think it was. Um, just think of all the guys. Catavius Caldwell Pope ain't committed nowhere. He trashed. A lot of them dudes for the Lakers that play good in the bubble, you put them in a scenario, Danny Green, well, he didn't play good in the bubble. You put these guys in a scenario, in a real NBA scenario, when you're traveling and got crowds, the Lakers, I guarantee you, I put my life on it. They wouldn't have won a championship last year in a regular, non control environment. Now, Danny Green going to Philly, you know, Cat Davis, Caldwell Pope, wherever he go. All these guys that's leaving, they about to go get all this money, and they went, they just they just was they just was fortunate to be in the bubble. You see Rondo shooting all them threes in the bubble. Has Rondo ever attempted that many threes? Throw no. There was no pressure in the bubble. And like I said before, I wouldn't count that championship before or after LeBron won it. But you know, I'm hearing Ron John Rondo make sound with the Atlanta Hawks. I think the Hawks, sheesh. I'm not sure if the Hawks picked up a point guard so far. They they drafted a uh, Oniko Kongu, uh, who made the um, Chino Hills the first ever high school to have three lottery players. So Lonzo, Lamelo. Okongu, so that was cool, and he had a fractured foot, so I'm not sure if he's gonna be ready to play for Atlanta. But you no, know, bringing Rajon Rondo in for them is is a, is a good. I know Rondo want to go for money instead of win. It's a good. That's a good. That's a good situation. I mean, even Rondo back to Boston would be good. You know, Boston need a, a point guard that can facilitate and put all them guys in the right position. Um, but I heard they may be trying to trade um, Kimball Walker to Chicago. You keep hearing this every other day, um, literally. But you know, at the end of the day. No, it is what it is. I think Ronzo Rondo retains retirement money. He won two championships. One with Boston, one a fake one with L.A. I think he's just chasing money. I mean, at one point, Ronzo Rondo, he was a quarterback in Louisville, Kentucky, I believe it was. So you can kind of see how those skills kind of translate to um, that. But um, partially, you know, if you want to chase the money, I ain't mad at him. But people chase that money and they get into losing situations. They ain't happy. It depends. You want to be a winner. You want to be If you take care of your money. It's going to be there. You invest the right way. But there's so many of us blacks who don't know how to invest the money the right way. I mean, just look at the guys you can lean on. Pretty sure Jamal Mashburn, you know, he didn't, man, he didn't have to continue hooping. He owned a, a whole bunch of chains of restaurants. People don't even know Chris Brown owned own a chain of restaurants. Magic Johnson, you can just lean on those brothers for advice how to invest your money. But if you chase the money this late in your career, I ain't mad at him. I think he should be chasing more rings. But Rondo ain't going down as no fucking Hall of Famer, no way. No matter what he do from this point on. He ain't going down as no Hall of Famer regardless. But, you know, if he joined the Atlanta Hawks, and that's, and that's true, I think him tutoring Trey Young how to play point guard would be perfect. You know, that would be perfect for them, man. He ain't got to go out there and play 40 minutes a game. You know, they need a lot of help over there. You got John Collins III, who I think they should trade. He always injured on that shit. Um, Cam, Reddish, the Hunter guy they got over there. So they need some veteran players that can really get them and show them how to play. They got potential. But at the end of the day, they the Hawks. You know, the NBA ain't going to let no damn Hawks win shit in, in the league. And that's just the God out of the truth about it. But, yeah, if Rondo go there, I mean, if he's chasing the ring, shit. I mean, Golden State would be a place. Um, well, I don't think they would outplay Thompson. Excuse me. Boston, going back to Boston. Um, sheesh, Miami. You know, um, but I think he's doing the right thing. I think at this point, he got so much game to offer. I think I can see if Rondo wanted to. I can see Rondo being the coach. I mean, him and Chris, Bre Chris uh, Paul and Ben Simmons is the last of a dying breed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, true point guards. The league is trying to. They took out the big man. And that's crazy. At some point, the big man to come back. I had Gilbert and said, oh, back in the day, they had to go through the big man. That's not true. Nate Tony Archibald was killing the game. You had guards that were scoring more than big man. Michael Jordan. I mean, you could just keep going on and on. Gilbert Arenas is a, you know, he just do, he just. Do shit. He talked like he was the best player in the league. He never was. He couldn't. They couldn't get past LeBron. They had a squad over in, in Washington. But you know, you gotta understand. They played the game the right way. How can can and I send us Gilbert Arenas ass? Cause I roast his ass anytime we get on. We talking about old school shit. I roast him. Explain how back in the day they averaged more points than the NBA, just as many points as the NBA does now without taking as many threes. Because they was more efficient. They talking about PPE, PPR, whatever. And the they was way more efficient back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And they and, and they had hand checking in the 80s. There was a lot of them teams was averaging over 101, 106 points a game. The Pistons in, I think, 88, 89, to be wrong. They was averaging over 106 points, 105 points a game. And they was they were supposed to be the best defensive team in the league. So, like I said before, man. You know, you got these people who got a mic. Who don't know who don't know shit about basketball. There's so many fundamentals that's lost 
from the 80s to the 90s. It ain't, I mean, in overall, the boxers was better. Um, the basketball the NFL players was better. It's just it's, they changed the game for the NBA to, to score more points. And they still barely scaring, scoring more points. They don't play it in an efficient manner. And that's what Gilbert Arenas is leaving out. And maybe, and maybe he don't know. He talk a lot of shit. Maybe he just don't know that, that how can you barely be keeping up with them motherfuckers back in the day. Especially if you go from 2009 and back to, to 90, whatever you want to go to. How can y'all barely be scoring less points and more threes and they scoring more points with less threes? You know, he's just an idiot, bro. You know, and I like Gilbert Arenas. He was a hell of a player and all that. But I hate when people, I hate, see, it, you should have to, you should have a yin and a yang. You got one motherfucker talking about, oh, our players, no, they wasn't. Him and Lou Williams, they fucking trash compared to players back in the day. The talent pool is deeper today. That's a, I mean, deeper yesterday. That's a fact. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't here to trash him. But when you got to do like that, talk, have somebody from back in the back, like Isaiah Thomas, that can really check his ass. But moving on, Fred Van Fleet, he stayed in Washington. It was reported yesterday or the other day that he wasn't going to resign Washington. He stays for four years, $85 million. They ain't got too many players left on that roster. Marcus Saul might be gone. Serge Ibaka might be gone. Um, sheesh, them two, two players right there. So, Carl Laurie got one more year left. So, they kept Fred Van Fleet. Um, they got Pascal Siaka, who didn't play well in the bubble. I'm not going to hold it against him. But, I mean, it's good to see Fred Van Fleet stay in uh, Toronto. This year, they'll be playing in Tampa, though, um, until Canada opened back up. Shit, Canada may not open back up for years. So, uh, they'll be playing in Tampa. I think a lot of players are like playing in Tampa a little bit more in Florida. So, we see, so this year they is going to Arena Arena. Uh, San Francisco declined. They didn't let uh, Golden State Warriors have 50% capacity. I mean, it is what it is. So congratulations to Fred Van Fleet. Let me know what you guys think about the video. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, also, our Facebook group, all those things in the description. If you want to reach out for a video request, chop it up. Or you got a business question, quality sponsorship, hit me up. Check out the NBA Talk playlist. Check me out on Sportscaster. Create a profile. It's free. So you can check out my live stream. Want to make a financial donation? Cash up, CJ Good 303. PayPal link in the description. Appreciate the love support. We gone.